Life family, it is 2022, the year of follow through. We are so happy to have you with us. Remember to wear your mask. We want to keep everyone safe. There are QR codes on the back of the chairs. Take some time if you're a visitor and connect with us today. What's good, life? This is the year of follow through, follow Jesus, fellowship with others, go fishing nonstop and flourish in the midst of famine. We have Friday night prayer every third Fridays at 9 p.m. Please bring your three cans of green beans every month for the donation for the Abbeville community. Happy birthday to all of our March birthdays. May God's love shine brighter on you this year. Christ loves a cheerful giver. We have three ways to give. You can connect with us at www.tlcabbeville.org or you can connect with us through Cash App, Dollar Sign Life Center Abbeville or Kingdom Life Training Center on Givelify. You can also give towards our building fund, Dollar Sign the Life Building Fund and that amount is $22 per month. God is doing something great as we reach the third month of the year. Let's continue to follow through and write the vision, make it plain. Trust God through the process and watch him do his thing. Oh, God. 
come up with somebody, and I need for you for about 30 seconds to a minute, just pray that the greatness of God will overrun their lives. Go ahead and pray now. Go ahead and pray now. I'm going to let you do a team up. Listen, at our church, we believe in the power of intercession. That's the ability to pray for one, one for another. Come on, just begin to pray for that person. Scripture for all athletes. 
They pray this before every game, Apostle. Here it is from the King James Version. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Okay, I guess only two people needed to hear that verse this morning. Okay. Let, let's go to the NIV. Maybe y'all will feel that one. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. My God shall supply all. Somebody say supply all. And my God will meet all. Somebody say meet all. If you don't remember anything, remember supply all, meet all, supply all, meet all, supply all, meet all. Supply all, meet all. I hope somebody that caught that by now. All your needs. According to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. According to the riches of his glory. Of, of his glory in Christ Jesus. Listen. If I had to give a title to this text. I need you to look at the person beside you. Grab their hand. Squeeze it hard. And look at them and say, I got gas. gas. <laughs> Y'all so unsafe. Y'all mind with this. <laughs> Y'all need Jesus. That sounded a little bit different, didn't it? <laughs> Jesus. What does God stand for? Here it is. What does G-A-S stand for? This is, when people talk about gas, you're going to tell them you got it all. Because gas stands for God and supply. Did you hear what I just said? Somebody should have shouted right there. I got God. I got God in supply. I got God in supply. He shall supply. He will meet. He shall supply. He will meet. God in supply. Father God, we thank you for this word. We thank you that this word is blessed. We thank you that your people are blessed. We thank you that Pastor Jesus Christ is here to show us that you got us in this season. Father, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. As the national average for a regular, gallon, uh, a regular gallon of gas has been broken, not just in the United States, but all over. This record was broken on Tuesday. The record of how much a gallon of gas will cost. Many are wondering, just like you, how long the surge may continue and when gas prices at the pump will finally drop. The dramatic rise in the cost has sent drivers into a frenzy. Gas Buddy, the popular fuel saving app that gives users the cost of gas in this area has its online services temporarily down because of the record breaking traffic as people look to the cheapest places to fill their gas tank. As of Tuesday morning, the average of a gallon of gas in the country was now at $4.17, wow. according to AAA. Wow. Now, I may be dating myself a little bit, but it was a time that I remember when we used to pull up to the gas station and $5 would get us through the week. Amen. It was a time where I remember when I was young when gas was 99 cents. Now in California, gas is straddling between seven and eight dollars. Wow. The price is up 10 cents from Monday, 50 cents from last week, and let me tell you this, gas prices are, 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 are deemed or believed to continue to rise throughout the year. Why are gas prices up? Well, it's a couple of reasons. One of the main reasons is because of the sanctions being put on Russia because of the war between the Ukraine and the Russians. One of the biggest determiners of gas prices is through this war because the crude oil prices have dramatically risen. Another reason why gas prices are up is because of the loosening of COVID restrictions. Mm -hmm. 
And now people, Brother Mon, are beginning to travel. So since they're beginning to travel in their cars, you know they need gas, so we're just going to bump the prices up. Wow. And it's also an increase in demand and reduction in total supply. Mm -hmm. I say all that not to scare you, not to make you unnerved, but we at this time can't stand on what it is that we see. We can't stand on what it is that we feel. But we have to, in fact, stand on the word of God. Did you hear what I just told you? Let me say it again. That we can't stand on what mama has told us. We can't stand on what the preacher preached 20 months ago that didn't agree with God's word. We have to stand on God's word. Somebody say stand on God's word. So today we'll stand at this house on Philippians 419. Somebody say, I will stand. I will Look stand. at your neighbor saying with authority. Say, I will stand. I will stand. Listen, I came to push you into another arena this morning. Say, I will, stand. I will stand. And so we will stand on Philippians 419. That our God will supply. Our God will meet all of our needs. Now, understand that this text is found in the book of Philippians. What is this book about? Here it is. It's one of Paul's most unusual letters. Why is it unusual? I'm glad that you asked. Because instead of Paul writing to correct the people, he's writing to thank the people. Wow. Did you hear what I just said? Please don't miss this moment. Please don't miss this opportunity. If you have not done it this month, you need to take the time to thank the people in your life. Yeah. Did you hear what I just said? Turn to somebody right now and just say thank you. Thank you. That was the wrong person. They weren't feeling you. Turn to somebody else that's going to smile and tell them thank you. thank you. Listen, now look right back at them and say, I received that. I received that. Because sometimes when people thank you, you have a problem with receiving their thank you. Just like you have a problem with receiving their apologies. That's a whole nother message for a whole nother time. But this is the season that we have to say thank you. Why was Paul writing to thank them? Why was he writing? Because he had dealt with so many doctrinal issues. Did you hear what I just said? And he had dealt with the craziness of church. Now watch this. Many times you deal with the craziness of people. And you're always trying to discipline people. You're always trying to chastise people. And you're always dealing with people with, with what it is that people don't do. You forget to thank the people that do that does the work. Amen. Stop focusing so much on what somebody didn't do. Yeah. What did they do for you? So watch this. In church, watch this. People will come to church and act like you ain't never did nothing. Yeah, that's 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 can, can, can I talk for a minute? Can, can, can I be transparent? Yes. Yeah, they'll say, Pastor Josh, you didn't call me back. So I got offended. But I've been praying for you for the last 10 years of your life. Yeah. I've been fasting for you. I've been interceding for you. You forgot the times that I showed up at the hospital and laid hands on the bedside. You forgot the times where I traveled two hours to go to a funeral of somebody that I didn't know but that you knew. Okay, ain't nobody saying amen now. I guess that's too harsh. We forget what people did do for us. And this is what I love about Paul, that he says, regardless of what I'm going through, because watch this, Paul was in jail at the time and still wrote him to say thank you. Oh, wow. Many times, especially with church folk, when it feel like we're locked up, yeah. we don't feel like we have the gall of the nerve to tell anybody or, or, or pat somebody on the back and tell them how good they are doing because we're too busy worrying about what's going on in our life. Yeah, let's talk this morning. Let's chat this morning. And so here it is. Paul is taking the time out to write to tell them thank you. Philippians is a different book. Why? Because in this book, he's talking more about joy. He's talking more about rejoicing. In this time and in this season of our lives, we have to move out the bad things and begin to talk about joy. We have to begin to talk about things that's going to make us smile, things that are going to make us laugh. Here it is. We don't need any negative vibes. Did you hear what I just said? My college students tell me all the time, they say, PJC, we don't want nobody in the room that's going to bring negative energy. We don't want anybody in the room that's going to bring negative vibes. You can't be the person that bring the negative vibes. You can't be the person 
person that brings the negative energy and you have to stop allowing those people to be around you in this season. Why? Because if you allow them to be around you in this season, yeah. you're going to walk in fear instead of walking in faith. Stop talking to everybody. Stop texting everybody. Stop emailing everybody. Hang the phone up. If they can't move in faith, you need to move them out your space. Write that down. Tweet that. Text that. If they can't move in faith, you got to move them out your space. This is not the time to be suffering from unbelief. We have to have a group of people that say, God, I don't see it, but I believe. God, I don't feel it, but I believe. God, I'm checking my bank account every day because I know what it is that I see is not going to be my future. It's not going to be my present. It's not going to be where I stay. You have to begin to move in faith. And so Paul wrote them about rejoicing. Paul wrote them about joy. And they sent this letter through a brother by the name of... Ephroditus. So they sent this letter through him. He went to jail, right, to deliver the letter to Paul in jail. Right. He gets sick. So Paul sends him back home. Paul sends him back home because he understands, watch this, that it's still a gathering that he needs to be in. It's still a group of people that he needs to be with, that he needs to be strengthened even in his sickness. Did you hear what I just said? What are we dealing with in this time, Pastor Josh? Not only are we dealing with a sick economy, not only are we dealing with a sick uh, uh, country, not only are we dealing with sick leadership, we're dealing with a sick church. And who are the sick people? This is going to trip you out. This is the revelation. The sick people that we're dealing with are the sick ones. Okay, y'all missed it. Apostle Deborah, they missed that. Yeah, this young man had been sent. Uh -huh. Watch this. You don't understand how sick pastors are. Uh -huh. You don't understand how sick preachers are. Yeah. You don't understand how sick prophets are. Yeah. You don't understand how sick apostles are. And why am I saying this, Mama B? Watch this. They ain't going to feel this. Why are they sick? Because they're sick of dealing with everything that you don't want to deal with. Wow. Okay, ain't nobody going to say me a I guess y'all just got mad. I was talking to a pastor, watch this, that has enough money right now, he can probably go out and buy a Bentley cash. Mm -hmm. So he got it. Look at somebody say he got it. Yeah. He got three churches, one location. You know what he told me? He said, PJC, I'm unhealthy. Wow. Okay, y'all don't want to talk. Because y'all think if you got a big old house, a big old car, that that brings health. And it does. Can, 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 can I talk as a leader real fast? Statistics show if you preach as a pastor over 42 Sundays, you're unhealthy. Oh. Wow. Why have we seen so many churches and so many pastors dying? Because the people run into the ground. Yeah. Wow. You know what I've realized, Brother Moon? What's that? that I can preach today yeah. and die tomorrow. Wow. Watch this. And the next week after that, y'all going to find another pastor. Come on, wow. Don't nobody want to talk now. Legitimate? Wow. Yes, that's good. And I'm not talking to the pastor. Right. 
I'm talking to God. Yeah, my God. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. And so pastor, this pastor told me, I'm sick because if I leave church yeah. for two months, ain't nobody going to be there. Wow. Because can I speak culturally for a minute? Yeah. Culturally. culturally. Since, 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 since the black pastor has took his place, watch this, they've looked to the black pastor to be the voice. Wow. They've looked for him to be the person. Yes, Let me say this, Brother Roosevelt. That's why we applaud Apostle Deborah for preaching last Sunday. Somebody better give God a hand. Watch this. That's why you're going to applaud when the leaders step up to preach for the rest of the month. Why, PJC? Wow. Because this church is not based off of a person. No. This church no. is based no. off of a principle. No. Why do you say that, Pastor Josh? Because rest is, it was Michael Jackson that left the Jackson 5 and then they fell apart. Whenever your entity, whenever your business, whenever your church is based on a person, whenever they leave, whenever they die, Somebody, 
You've been praying, God, supply me with money. Yeah. Yeah. You've been praying, God, supply me right. with the right finances. Right. You've been praying, God, supply me with the Come right mate. Yeah. You know what? I ain't praying for none of that for you. You know what I'm praying? That God will supply you with some rest. Somebody say satisfaction. Satisfaction. Yeah. Uh, I ain't going to dive into it. My flesh just wanted to say satisfy you. Y'all don't remember that. That was by Diddy and R. Kelly. That was back in the 90s. I ain't going to even say I ain't going to even say that. Let me go to verses 10 through 12. Watch this. Read this. I'm going to give you scripture really fast. This is what Paul says to them. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. This is crazy. Because Paul is saying, as a pastor, I'm just happy somebody care about me. All right, that's in the text, okay? Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. Mm -hmm. I am not saying this because I am in need. Come here, Paul, for I have learned to be content. Wow. Whatever the circumstances, uh, circumstances, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. Let's dive into it. First thing that Paul is saying is, that God is going to satisfy you in times of plenty. Wow. Did you hear what I just said? Somebody need to say amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Sometimes our blessings, watch this, this is the problem though. In times of plenty, sometimes our blessings take our eyes off the blesser. Okay, it got quiet. Let me say it again. Sometimes our blessings take our eyes off the blesser. Come on, that's good. Let me say it again. Sometimes. The blessings of God take our eyes off the blesser and we forget that God blessed us with the blessing. We start looking and say, man, I got a good job. I'm making more money than I ever made in my life. That God did not, that job did not bless you, God. God blessed you with the job to get the finances. Ultimately, God is always the blesser. And so God says that I will satisfy you in times of plenty, but you have to remember where your blessing comes from. Somebody say, remember. remember. Hebrews 12 and 2. I need to give this to you. It says this, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter on our, of our faith. You know one of the biggest things that takes our eyes off God? What's that? It's our blessing. Wow. Don't nobody want to talk. I'm by myself. Yeah. So watch this. Now we, 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 we've seen people living in poverty, and we'll get to that. But we've also seen people that's living in plenty that's totally forgot about God. That's good. That's good. That's good. You're making more money than you ever made in your life, and you don't pray like it. 
Okay, I'm by myself a possibility it's just me and you. Watch this. Your family closer than it's ever been, but you won't bring your family to church. You won't pray with your family. You won't do a small group with your family. Wow. You got the you live in the best part of your life. Watch this. And you won't even connect that back with God. Where are we as a church when God has given us the overflow, but we won't give back to him? And so Paul is saying, even in my plenty, I'm not going to forget God because God is the ultimate one that satisfies you. Because what happens when that season runs out? You're going to need something, not, not something, you're going to need someone. Somebody say his name, say Jesus. Jesus. You're going to need Jesus. Say it again, say Jesus. Jesus. If I was in a store for a church, they'll say it louder than that. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Here it is. In times of plenty, but watch this, also in times of poverty. Right, right. Can I tell you what the world is experiencing right now is biblical. Wow, that's good. Please don't miss this. We got to talk about it. Can I, can I, I'm just going to give you Matthew 24 and 7. Dads, when you get a chance, go back and read the entire text. What does it say? Nations will rise against nations. Come on, sir. Okay, I'm reading the Bible. I'm telling you, if you will read your Bible. It was Clarence McClendon that looked at Dietrich Haddon on the preacher and said, you need to read your Bible, young man. <laughs> if you would read your Bible, some of these questions that you have, all the questions that you have can be answered. What's going on in the world? The Bible tells you. Nations will rise against nations. Kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. Now, I know some of y'all don't believe the Bible, okay? <laughs> Yahoo Finance, yeah. which is known as one of the greater or the higher powers in speaking on finance. Wow. Most of the people that deal with Yahoo Finance in the upper echelon, they will tell you in the business world, are atheists. They don't even believe in God. But watch this. What are they tracking in this season, Pastor? What events are they following? Y'all gonna miss it. The Bible. Wow. Okay, see, so y'all just missed it. Did you hear what I just said? Yahoo Finance just released an article and said that we are amongst biblical time. Come on, girl. They don't even believe in God. And they read the Bible more than you do. Let me go to this side right here. They don't believe in God. But they are tracking the finances through the Bible. Please come here, Brother Mark. If you would pay attention to the Bible and work the biblical principles in your life, could it be that God will transition you and shift you to a whole nother place? But you don't want to follow biblical traditions. You don't want to follow biblical guidelines. You don't want to follow what the Bible teaches you about finances or anything else. You believe what Big Mama said. Ain't nobody feeling me here but Brother Mark on that. Because we're talking about finances. So watch this. You won't get a bank account, understand interest and all this stuff. You won't get stocks and bonds because you remember what Big Mama used to stuff all her money in her bra and in her mattress. Ain't nobody going to say amen. amen. Big Mama knew nothing about how to put money in stocks and bonds. Big Mama knew nothing about credit cards. Big Mama, we love her because Big Mama could pray her. And cook. Y'all don't want to talk. And so if Yahoo Finance is, is telling us that we're on the verge, watch this, we're right here in biblical times, this is what they're searching, this is what they're reading, this is what they're dissecting, how much more should you be informed on what's going on in the world? Can I tell you, it's not that we won't have it. Come on. Josh. You know what the world tells you and what the Bible says? That? that the people won't be able to pay for it. Come on, wow. sir. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, sir. It's not that we don't have gas. Ooh, it's yeah. the fact that when you pull up to the pump, right. you can't pay for it. I'm a prophetic pastor. Let me point you to something. Let's go. It's not that we won't have grain. Come here, Bible. Uh -huh. It's the fact that you won't have the money to Maybe I'm by myself, but I come against all that right now. Watch this. I just gave you a scripture. You ought to lift your hands and say, I 
will have more than enough. See, this is where the life has to be different. While other people are struggling, me and Brother Marco talk about stuff like this. We gonna pull up at the gas station, fill my car up, and then let me fill the next 10 cars up. in the midst of a recession, that in the midst of famine, that not only am I going to buy me a house, let me buy you a house too. Let me buy you a car too. That's where your mind has to be, that I will have more than enough. Elbow somebody and say, I got more than enough. You didn't elbow, elbow for real, I got more than enough. In times of plenty and in times of poverty. Paul is saying this because you got a choice. Somebody say you got a choice. Whether you're going to walk in chaos or whether you're going to walk in contentment. Did you hear what I just said? You got a choice. What you going to walk in. Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 11, 22 through 31 why it is that he was content. Can, can, I, can I share some of the reasons why Paul wasn't tripping about being in jail? What's that? Some of the reasons why you shouldn't be tripping? What's that? Because if you look back over your life, wow. you done been through worse than you in now. Yeah. 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 Can, can I Paul? What the it. hell you done been through? Yeah. 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 This ain't my first time being broke. <laughs> this ain't my first time not having nothing. Never done that. Watch this. I got married with negative in my bank account. Let's go, boy. If God gave me money back then, you don't think he'll give me money back right, right now? Back. Can I help somebody? Brother Marco, this is just me and you this morning. Money should be the last thing on your mind. Yeah. Why? Why? Because if you sow, you know what you got to reap.
choice of the restaurant where we want to go eat. Come on here. It's a level of humbleness that we have to walk in as believers. Because can I tell you something? Don't none of us deserve nothing. You run around, we deserve it. You actually don't. No, I actually have to, you don't. I work hard for you, okay. We deserve death. <laughs> but the grace of God has given us life. So we have to change our verbiage. I'm humbled to be able to have it. I'm humbled to be able to walk into it. I'm humbled to be able to buy a house. I'm humbled to be able to watch this, to buy my wife a car. I'm humbled for these things. Right, right. Sometimes we don't deserve it. Come on, Thank you, Jesus. That's tough, y'all. Thank you, Jesus. I know a lot of people ain't preaching that, Evangelist Griffin. No, nobody's preaching that. That's real talk, though. Because it's a level of humbleness that we have to walk into. When you walk in a level of humbleness, I'm telling you, watch this. It was a lady by the name of Sonia Brownlee. It was a lady by the name of Elizabeth Washington. Yes, sir. They looked at me and said, when you humble yourself, Yes, sir. You can't imagine the places that God is going to take you to. Yes, Father. Okay, I'm just trying to help somebody. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about me. Because it, when, when we get a lot of things, Elder Thomas, we start to get arrogant. And you act like you deserve it. And we got a problem with that in the church with church folk. Yeah, we do. And I'm not talking about, watch this, materialistic. Yeah. I'm talking about spiritual. Right. Right. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. right. What are you talking about, Pastor Josh? I'm whispering. You think because you've been saved for 20 years, somebody owes you something. Come on, here. Come on, here. You think because you can pray, because you can promise. Yeah. Come on, watch this. Come on. That you watch this, that you may get to take a break or get to take a moment off. You don't. Christ did. The disciples did. So you don't either. When you sign on that dotted line to be a Christian, you sign away your life. And it's okay. Why did I sign away my life so I can have a second life in heaven? So I should come back in I don't even have enough time. I don't even got into my second point yet. I ain't gonna finish. I know I'm not. So when we talk about contentment, we're not talking about being complacent. Paul was not complacent. Because he had planned, if he had kept living, that he was going to take a trip to Spain, watch this, to be able to deliver the gospel to people that did not have it. Paul is describing something, watch this, and I need to deal with this. Why won't you be dismayed? Why won't you, Elder Thomas, be, watch this, discombobulated? Why, Sister Charity, won't you give up on what God told you? Because Paul says something in this text that I think you need to hear. Watch this. This is what Paul says. Paul says in verse 10, watch this, because mm -hmm. for I have learned. Wow. Come yep. on. Come on. Come yep. on. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Did you wow. hear what I just God. said? Right. Paul said that I have learned. Mm -hmm. right. Paul used this twice in this text. Meaning that it has to be something that he's learned by experience. Right. I've learned that my God will supply all my needs. Because it was David that said this, that you need to add to your prayer Rolodex. David said, I've never seen the righteous for sin. Oh, no sin of begging for grain. So in this season, we should not be begging for him. Come on, in this season, God is not going to forsake us. He's not going to leave us in times of plenty. He's not going to leave us in times of poverty. Here it is. Can I tell you, in this season, write this down. Somebody put this in your phone. God says that I'm going to use unexpected and unconventional ways to bless you. Unexpected and unconventional ways. I need you to write that down. Unexpected and unconventional ways to be able to bless you. Here's a popular story that you all have heard. So it was a man that got trapped on a roof, watch this, during times of a flood. Right. 
He looked up to heaven and prayed, God, send me some help. Wow. God, send me some help. You guys, I think you've heard this story before. Yeah. He's on this roof. He's trapped. The waters are rising. Yeah. God sends a boat by. Mm -hmm. He said, God, send me some help. God sent a boat by. Mm -hmm. In a flood? In a flood. Unconventional. Unconventional. Watch this. Unexpected. How in the world a boat just coming through? Yeah. But it can save your life. Yeah. That ain't God. <laughs> wow. He got the boat going by. Oh, wow. Next. Sends a helicopter. Right, sister. <laughs> Sends a helicopter, a chopper. <laughs> God, that can't be you. Wow. Watch this. You wouldn't want me to do all that work when they drop the ladder down. Then I got to climb up. Can I tell you, sometime to get to the next level in life, you're going to have to climb. <laughs> Matter of fact, that's the only way to get up to the mountain. I'm coming up on the rough side. <laughs> Oh, mountain. What is it? I'm trying my best to make it in. Hallelujah. Pastor Josh knows some old songs, y'all. I know y'all. I grew up in church my whole life. <laughs> that, 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 Pastor, you ought to see their eyes when I sing something. <laughs> Apostle never want me to replace it. Okay, we ain't gonna go Just the RD. He sent a helicopter. Watch this. He didn't he, because he had to climb up. He said, God send me some help. Supply what it is that I need. What? Do it now, God. He, he, he didn't take it. You heard the story. Watch this. For the sake of time. It was a couple of other modes of transportation that God sent by. Long story short, the waters kept rising. He ended up dying. Wow. He get to heaven and said, God. Why in the world you ain't send me no help? God says, I sent you a boat. God said, I sent you a helicopter. God I said, I sent you all these modes of transportation. But because they look different. Because you weren't familiar with this. You missed your opportunity to be blessed. Please don't miss in this season, Mother Kelly, the way God is going to bless you. Please don't miss the unconventional ways and the unexpected ways that God is going to use. If God would use a raven to feed some man, what you think God can do with your life? If God used jars of oil to, watch this, to give somebody a business and an enterprise, please stop thinking that the that you have in your mind can't create wealth. I was doing some research on millionaires, billionaires. Uh, and and, 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 and y'all think about this. Y'all know it was somebody that had to come up with the lid of a coffee cup. Oh, awesome. oh see, see, y'all missing it though. I got you. I bet you when he went to his friends, they were like, you want to put a lid on a coffee cup? <laughs> How much money do you think that the inventor of the lid of the coffee cup is rolling in now? Yes. I'm just trying to speak to some people that's going to think this morning. I'm going to lift up your hands. I'm believing that God will send you an invention and an idea to not just supply you, but to supply the kingdom with what it is that is needed. If you agree with that, somebody say amen. amen. Listen, I got to move. Not only will God supply you, watch this, but he will also, watch this, let's go to the next one. What is God doing in this season? He's going to strengthen you. Go ahead and throw those points up there for me, Lady J. Watch this, he's going to strengthen you. Somebody say in potential. Number two, throw it up there. He's going to strengthen you in what? He's going to strengthen you in power. Somebody say in power. And then he's going to strengthen you in the promise. Here it is, this Philippians 4.13. It says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. In his will and in his time, that means that I can rise above any situation. Can I speak to somebody? Let me be a motivational speaker for just one minute. Everything that's in you, everything that you need to accomplish, everything that you see is already in you. Wow. You were built with it inside of you. You have the potential. Let me say it again. You have the potential. Let me say it again. You have the potential, but where you put the work with the potential? was a football player that got drafted from the University of LSU. He got drafted from the University of LSU.
LSU, watch this, he was 6'5", he was oh, he was 270 pounds, and anybody know anything about football, standing still, Minister Morty, he could throw about 80 yards. Did you hear what I just said? Standing still, not taking a step, he could take a football in those massive hands and throw 80, 90 yards. His name was Jamarcus Russell. He had all the potential in the world, but watch this, he had no work ethic. Did you hear what I just said? Brother Mon is prophesying. He's out the league right now. What are you moving yourself out of because you won't put the work with your potential? And so watch this. They went into the film room. They knew that he had stopped studying the tape. How did they know that he had stopped studying the tape? How did they know that he did not learn from his experience? Watch this. They gave him a blank tape. Told him, take the tape home. Watch the film. Watch this. He came back to the office the next day. They said, Jamarcus, did you watch the film? He said this. Yeah, I watched it. Let's go ahead and break it down. The coach looked at him. He wasn't afraid to confront him. He said, I know you didn't watch the tape. Watch this. Because ain't nothing on the tape. This is what I need you to do. Go clean out your locker. We're going to clutch you right now. How many times have you been cut for what God wants to do in your life because you refuse to put your potential with your work? How many tapes have God allowed you to watch? How many things have you experienced before you would say, God, I trust you. God, I believe you. God, I'm going to put my faith in you. Put your potential with your power and you'll see a promise. Somebody say amen. amen. You can have all the potential in the world. Here it is. I can have all the sway. I can have all the bravado. I can have all the charisma I want. But what happens if I never study the word of God? We got a lot of people up in church. They preaching, but they ain't got no anointing behind it. They ain't setting no people free. Watch this. They ain't moving God's agenda. They just up there looking good. You never want to be in a space where you're not making an impact. You never want to be in a space where you're not being influential. God is giving you the potential. God is giving you not your power, his power. Did you hear what I just said? Not your power, his power. Can I say that again? Not your power, but his power. Listen, if I was in a Baptist church, I would close with this scripture right here. It says, now to him who is able to do it miserably, more than we can ask, imagine, according to his power, that worketh within us. What does that scripture tell us? Look at your neighbor and say, he's able. Y'all missed it. Turn to somebody else and say, he's able. Okay, that was the wrong person. Turn to somebody else and say it like you mean it. Say, he's able. That means that God is able to do just what he said he would do. You know the song. He's got to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He's able. He's able. He's able. Let me say it again. He's able. He's going to strengthen you. And what's the last thing? Give it to me. Give it to me. That's good, sir. He's going to simply, somebody say, supply me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. This is what Paul said, I'm moving, in verse 14. Yet it was good for me, good of you, to share in my troubles. Wow. Moreover, as you, as the Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving. Let me pause for station identification. To simply tell you, like Paul told the church at Philippi, thank you for sharing with me this morning. Thank you for the jobs that you do and the work that you do for the Life Center. Thank you for giving to the pastors. Thank you for giving to the leadership. Thank you for giving to the elders. Watch this. How many churches had Paul planted and nobody had ever given him a dime? Yeah, I can preach this text at every pastoral anniversary. Taking care of your leader, a whole nother topic for a whole nother time. He said this, for even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more yeah. than once. Yeah. When I was in need. Right. More than once, thank you for sharing. Thank this is what Paul said, not that I desire your gifts. What I desire is that more be credited to your account. Okay, some of y'all missed that. Wow, that's good. Come on here. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Going in there. Let me talk about the Lord. He's a financial guy. Yeah. When I've done something, uh -huh. watch this. 
in the business world, in the financial world. Brother Marco, you rebuke me if I'm wrong. When I've done something, watch this, and they're going to give something back to me for what it is that I've done, more often than not, Shaq, they'll say this. We may not put it in your pocket, uh, but we're going to credit it to your account. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Brother Marco, repeat me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Some of y'all should be rejoicing. Come on. Because how much is God has he credited to your account? Jesus. Okay, maybe three. I ain't talking to everybody. I'm just talking to the people that have done stuff that ain't nobody seen. I'm talking to the people that have done things and hadn't asked for anything. And you don't know God is steady putting money in your account. Just go ahead and throw it up there, boo. We're going to get up out of here. Watch this. The believers had sacrificed to meet Paul's needs. Paul reminds them. I'm here to remind you this morning that God is going to take care of you. I'm here to give you comfort that God is going to take care of you. I'm here to challenge you this morning that when God takes care of you, it's going to be on you to take care of somebody else. Yes. You are not blessed to just hold it to you. But you are blessed to bless somebody else. Come on, say it with me. I'm blessed to bless. Come on. I'm blessed to bless. Say it again. I'm blessed to bless. Come on, do it. I'm blessed to bless. Come on, say it. I'm blessed to bless. Come on, say it. I'm blessed to bless. To bless. Come on, say I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Come on, say I'm blessed to bless. When you walk out of here, I'm blessed to bless. Say it again. I'm blessed to bless. Put in your spirit. I'm blessed to bless. In your mind, I'm blessed to bless. Keep your right song. I'm blessed to bless. I want you to rap it. I'm blessed to bless. Who my DJ? I'm blessed to bless. Where my horns? I'm blessed to bless. Where my drums? I'm blessed. To the bless. Yep. I'll take you to a place I don't want to go. I don't know during the Super Bowl, I will crib walking the whole time. Okay. Y'all know I ain't got about three dances in my repertoire. That one of them, I can crib walk. I ain't no crib. I'm a blood. Because I'm covered in the blood. Y'all just missed it. Here it is. The context, the comfort, the challenge. It's something that I always date back to, especially in moments like this when we're thinking about the gas, when we're thinking about God and supply. So how old was I, Apostle Deborah? Maybe five years old, maybe five years old. Four years old, and my parents had bought me this doom buggy. You can play softly for me, sister. My parents had bought me this doom buggy, um, and those that have been a part of the Life Center, you've heard this story maybe a million times. Not only have I talked about it, but Apostle Deborah have talked about it. And so I got this doom buggy at the age of four, and I was like, I want to ride in it, but at the age of four, I knew that I would pull up to the gas station with my mom and dad, gas 99 cent, they would put gas in their car, and that would make their car go. So, Brother Mon, I was like, I can't go nowhere without a gas tank. Wow. So, I told my mom I wanted this gas tank, and uh, we were looking everywhere for it, right, Apostle Devil? We were looking everywhere for it. Uh, and we went in uh, Walmart, and it was like, we ain't got none left. And this is what my mom told me one night. She said, Josh, we're going to pray, and we're going to believe God. Wow. We're going to have the faith. This is at four years old. Wow. That God is going to supply. Do you hear this, Avi, Genesis Aviana Childs? That if there's anything that I can pass down to you, it's the legacy of faith that your grandmother yeah. on both sides yeah. have been able to give me that you would yeah. always know right. that God will supply in your life. Not only am I giving that to my kids, I'm giving that to this house. Do they hear me? Yeah. Sister Hope, I hope they understand your walking testimony that God will supply. Yeah. Listen, can I just take a toll? Can I take a real quick toll of hands? Lift your hands if God has ever supplied for you. Amen. I don't want you to look at your hands. I need you to look at the person beside you. Because everybody under the sound of my voice has had a moment when God has supplied in their life. Yeah. You, you, God is going to live. Walmart. We couldn't find it anywhere. I was 
was on the verge of tears. Here's Deborah Child. She said, we're going to go back and look one more time. Come on, boy. I don't know if they had it there. I don't know if an angel put it there. Yes, yeah. All I know is, we went over there by the toys and we, and, and we looked up under some stuff. That's a prophetic word. Look under some stuff in this season. Come on here. Come on here. It's some stuff hiding from you in this season. Tay, I look up under. And I pulled out my gaze. And I would never get rid of this gas tank as long as I live. Why, Pastor Josh? Because if I ever start to doubt God, I will shift back into that little boy that was four years old. And I say, God, if you provide gas then, you're going to provide gas now. God, when I couldn't see it then, you put it there. It was under some things. And all I had to do is reach under and grab it. What am I telling you this morning, Life Center? Reach under and grab what it is that God has for you. Watch this. You will not be broke. You will not go hungry. You will not lack. You will not be depleted, but I declare and I decree in this house that you shall have more than enough. Somebody say, I shall have more than enough. You will have more than enough. If you believe it, give God a hand clap of praise right there. Come on, here it is. Come on, everybody on their feet. Everybody on their feet. Let me pray for you. Here it is. I'm going to release it over your life. I've learned. Come here, Paul. Okay, y'all missing it. Can I be honest? It's some mornings when I wake up and I say, God, I have no idea what it is that you do. Okay, maybe I'm by myself, prophetess, bro. I wake up some morning and I'm mad at the place that I'm in in life. Okay, don't nobody want to talk. Maybe I'm by myself on this. Get up in the morning sometime, dead, and I'm upset at God because I'm like, God, you ain't moving fast enough. Y'all don't want to be honest. Can I get three people to keep it real, though? I'm upset at God. I'm unnerved at God. I'm like, how in the world can I continue to praise you? How in the world can I continue to serve you? How in the world can you still be the God that you say you are and things are not moving? Watch this. The way I think they need to be moved. And I'm here to remind you the way God calmly reminds me every morning. I'm the same today. I'm the same yesterday. I'm the same. Watch this. That same God that did the impossible would do the impossible in your life. Everybody to lift up their hands. 
I think this is a special moment in not just my life, but in your life. It was a transaction that just took place this morning. Did you hear what I just said? Do you mind if I give them a brief synopsis about what you're transitioning out of? Am I released to say that? So God sent this man of God here, Brother Mike, how many years ago? Three years ago. He was a member of Redemption. He was a member of Relentless. They have 15,000 members. Plus. This is what God told him. It's going to bless you. Prophet is broke. He said the anointing for you is not in the 15,000. He said that God told him the anointing for you is in the 150. Did you hear what I said? Please don't miss this. He said, so God told him, you have to start driving from Greenville to Agaville. Because there's an anointing on your life that you can only get at that house. Okay, see, I'm just talking to the faithful folk. Let me talk to the faithful people. He wouldn't tell you this, but sometimes he would drive from Greenville back to Abbeville two or three times a week. Working on the praise team. Coming yeah. to help me out. Yeah. Watch this. Whenever it is somewhere that I need to go, I'll reach out to him. He'll say, man, I got, I'll take off if you need me. Now, it's not just Brother Mike. We got several men in this house that will do that for me. I'm talking about what God is doing with him because I believe that God is exchanging some things for his sacrifice. Not just his sacrifice, but if you have been one of those people, you better receive it as well. So watch this. Two weeks ago, he told me this, Apostle Deborah. He said, I think my season is up. I think my season is up where I'm at because I want to be better, watch this, to be able to serve God. Now, this is just me and him talking, watch this. He doesn't make chunk change. Let, 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 let me help you out on that. So if he walks away from something, it's something major. But sometimes you got to walk away from what seems major to the world to step into something that's major unto God. just came up to him. She didn't know any of this story. She knows that he travels and she put a gas card in his hand. Okay, y'all missed it. Three people got it.
the strength from heaven and say, Father, give me the supply from heaven. This is what I need you to know. You can't depend on our economy system in America. You have to begin to depend on the kingdom's economy. Because the world will never pay you what you're worth. You go on that job, they'll pay you 100000 But what happens when your gift brings in millions? I'm just talking to me and Brother Mark right now. What happens, Brother Frank? When you got the anointing to keep that meal running and they don't even know it. What happened when through your prayer, Sister Beverly, that you're keeping everything in that parking lot afloat? Did you hear what I just said? Sister Emily, go and put your hand in Sister Beverly's back, please, please, please. It's something on it. God gonna supply, God gonna supply. God gonna supply. And this is what somebody God told me say He gonna supply for your kids. He got a covenant with your babies. That's different. Yeah, I know some stuff that you did, but God is gonna take care of your kids and your kids' kids. That's different. TJ, did you hear what I just said? You can't stay broke. I'm not talking about broke physically. You can't stay broke in your spirit. You can't stay down. You can't be depleted like this. Father, release a freshness over their life. Pour something out different over their life. Here it is, all eyes closed, all heads bowed. It may be somebody in here that have walked away from the Lord and you're saying, this is my moment, this is my opportunity to get back right with God. It may be some, somebody in here that's saying that I need to give my life to the Lord. Whether it's for the first time or whether it's a rededication. It may be somebody in the house that's saying, listen, I need to join forces with you, PJC, because I know you're rocking with God. You're rolling with Jesus. I need to join forces with this house. I need to connect and commit to this house. Listen, you can let that hand go, all her eyes closed, all heads bowed. If that person is you, I need you to slip up your hand. If you're saying, I need to rededicate my life to God. If you're saying, I need to connect and I need to join this house. Listen, I see you. I see you. I see you. Listen, I thank God for you. Listen, this is what I want to do. Because you want to connect with this house. Because you want to give God your life. This is what we're going to do. We're all going to pray this sinner's prayer at the same time. And then I'm going to bring you up front. So we can uh, so we can celebrate what God is doing in your life. Come on, listen. Giving your life to God is simple as ABC. Come on, Genesis. Yeah, come on, Genesis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's simple as ABC. It's simple as. ABC 1 through 3. What do you have to do? You have to accept Jesus Christ. What do you have to do after that? You have to believe that he died. And then what do you have to do? You have to confess your sins. Do you hear what I just said? ABC. Admit, believe, confess. Admit, believe, confess. Come on, let's do it. Say, Father God, Father God I admit that I'm a sinner. But say, Father God, Father God, I believe that you died for my sins. Say, Father God, confess that I'm a sinner and I want to give you my life and because I believe that you died and rose I can live a saved life Father I give you the praise